Our mistrust in media is at an all-time high. Could it be because of incidents like the Joe Rogan versus Dr. Sanjay Gupta conversation where Rogan confronted him on CNN's misrepresentation of his own experiences with coronavirus and its treatment? Let's have a look at that whole story. Let's track it because remember, Joe Rogan thinks that this is one of the best news sources in the world. And Joe Rogan's never wrong. <laughs> So mainly we want to talk to you about Joe Rogan's conversation with Sanjay Gupta and media reporting on various subjects, media bias and prejudice. But it's worth noting at this point that a recent survey has said that America's trust in the media to report the news fully, accurately and fairly has edged down four percentage points since last year to 36 percent, making this year's reading the second lowest in Gallup's trend. Between 72 and 76, 68 to 72 percent of Americans express trust in the mass media. This is a time of mistrust. I mean, it's astonishing to think that between 68 and 72, like Vietnam War, all of the social unrest and social unease around that time, that trust was that high. Maybe things are improving. Maybe we're becoming more aware of media manipulation. But make no mistake, the media, government and big business necessarily operate in a triumvirate of exchange and complicity to maintain the status quo from which they all benefit. A great example of this comes in the phenomenal shape of Joe Rogan, who, because of his unique media position, having his own direct relationship with the people that watch his content, he has a unique opportunity and a unique voice and is able to confront misinformation as he sees it, when he sees it. As a result of this, his conversation with Sanjay Gupta from CNN had many fascinating points. Let's have a look at some of those. More breaking news this evening. Joe Rogan, an extremely popular podcaster, announced on social media today that he has COVID. Turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin, z -Pak. I would say, broadly speaking, that Joe Rogan is a fascinating media figure because he's an autodidact self-educating himself, <laughs> obviously, through the course of his podcast. You can see Joe Rogan's evolution, perhaps in a way that some people think you can see my opinions alter and change because he's continually talking to experts in a variety of subjects. It doesn't fit easily into pre-existing categories around liberalism, conservatism, because like he hunts, but he's pretty progressive about men's health and mental health. He's pretty progressive, very progressive on civil rights issues. So he's a difficult figure to confine, but aside, define and confine. But aside from that, he has his own access to the public. So he's not constrained by ordinary celebrity regulation. And I think that that's part of the problem. So I feel that, you know, coronavirus and its complexities, and I'm certainly no expert on coronavirus with any axe to grind or any opinion to push. I feel that, that Joe Rogan is in a unique position. And even though this particular matter is around coronavirus, and we all know how hotly this space is contested, it says a lot about his role in the media space and the antipathy that the established media feels for figures like that because it's breaking through the established patterns of communication. Joe Rogan can, within reason, say whatever he wants, believe whatever he wants, and he's not subject to the sanctions that the media likes to impose on people that disagree with them. One of those drugs he mentioned, ivermectin, is something more often used to deworm horses. When you have a horse deworming medication that's discouraged by the government, that actually causes some people in this crazed environment we're in to actually want to try it. Now, this guy in particular is very enthusiastic about labeling ivermectin, a horse deworming drug, which of course it is, but it's also a Nobel Prize winning drug that's an anti-parasite drug. And obviously I know that you lot all know that now. We're not talking about ivermectin, the qualities of ivermectin, the efficacy of ivermectin. What interests me is the hyperbole and editorializing of the news. Why would CNN just want to present only one side of that argument? They're carrying a particular agenda. Why is that? And if you're able to carry a particular agenda without significant criticism, except for in unregulated or less regulated spaces, what does that suggest to you? It suggests that there is an intention and objective and the obstacles to that intention and objective are being shut down.
You're probably really? the only one at CNN that's glad. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not. The rest of them are all lying about me taking Hork's medication. <laughs> and we should talk about that. That bothered you. Like, it's interesting here because like, cause Joe Rogan's had the opportunity to confront Sanjay Gupta from that network. I've been on Joe Rogan's podcast and his general demeanor is not of someone that you would lightly confront because obviously he's a combat expert. And I don't mean that he's going to fly across the desk and choke you. I mean that people like that often have a good grounding when it comes to confrontation and an ability to think strategically. So he's not willing to let Sanjay Gupta just go, oh, that seemed to bother you. That uh, bothered you. Even in his first utterance, Sanjay Gupta is putting the blame on Joe Rogan as if Joe Rogan's a kind of snowflakey about having been judged about it. It should bother you too. Uh, They're well, lying I, at your network about people taking human drugs versus drugs for it, veterinary. It, calling it a horse dewormer is not a flattering thing. I get it's that. It's a lie. It's a lie on a news network, it, it, and it's a lie that's a willing that's that's a lie that they're conscious of it's not a mistake yeah they're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine elsewhere on our channel we've talked about misinformation in the mainstream media and if you can track in this story the nature of the misinformation i.e a news network that knows that ivermectin has numerous uses highlighting, promoting, and amplifying a derogatory and pejorative aspect of that drug's function is an editorial stance. You can then take what you know here and see how it applies elsewhere. What else are they saying? What else are they not saying? You can use it. You can see now, oh, there's an agenda to present certain pieces of information one way and certain pieces of information another way. First of all, it was prescribed to me by a doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. along they with shouldn't have said a it was bunch worse. of if, other if medications. Was, if you got a human pill because there were people that were taking it, the veterinary medication and I you're not, obviously. You got it from a doctor, so that it shouldn't be called that. Of course they're even Sanjay Gupta's angle is oh some people were taking it straight out of the vets and stuff like that but again that's highlighting a particular aspect of the story. oh hillbillies in dungarees with backwards baseball caps on guzzling down horse dewormer why would you present these particular strains and these particular slants on a story but my point is you're working for a news organization if they're lying about a comedian taking horse medication what are they telling us about russia what are they telling us about Syria? Do you, not, do you understand that that's why people get concerned about the veracity of the news? So there you go. Joe Rogan spells out the nature of the problem. Once you can see the existence of bias plainly, and I know because I read your comments, that you guys, wherever you are on the political spectrum, are well schooled in media bias, media prejudice. You've taught me how to look at stories differently. The reason I think it's a significant point, one is of course Joe Rogan has a, a, a voice that's big enough to reach people, and because it points out something that's really plain and really obvious. The media is not telling you news, the media is pushing you in a particular direction. That the whole function of media is to maintain a particular state, a particular stasis and order so that we primarily operate within certain bounds as consumers, that we have prejudices in one direction against certain classes and castes of people, that we don't operate within certain thought spaces, that we don't use particular language. Now, I'm, as you know, I because there's a variety of people that watch this channel, I'll disagree with all of you on something, but what I think is very, very important is that we are able to, hmm, what do I want to say, detach ourselves from these kind of lobes of idiocy that we've had attached to us, pumping us full of information to keep us docile, distracted, angry and agitated as suits the agenda of a small percentage of institutions and individuals that benefit from an ecologically unsustainable, unequal, unfair and incendiary social situation that's actually, horror of horrors, mostly not real. But he, he did say something about ivermectin that I think wasn't actually correct about CNN and lying, okay? Subsequent to that, Sanjay Gupta went on to Don Lemon's show to sort of break down and analyze his conversation with Rogan. Ivermectin is a drug that is commonly used as a horse dewormer. So it is not a lie to say that the drug is used as a horse dewormer. The only thing that would be acceptable at this point would go, do you know what we did, right? Because we are fully behind particular courses of action and not behind other courses of action, we really highlighted anything negative about ivermectin and 
dismissed anything that would be positive about it. If at the, that point you double down on the lie, what you are, I think, categorically doing is demonstrating that you can't use this as a news source. You can't use it. You can watch it for entertainment, but yeah, you might as well be watching like The Waltons or Sesame Street or anything really, because well, Sesame Street, they help you with spelling, don't they? CNN ain't even a proper word. You're right. I mean, the FDA even put out a, a statement saying, you know, basically reminding people it was a strange sort of message from the FDA, but that said, you're not a horse, you're not a cow, stop taking this stuff, is essentially what they said, referring to ivermectin. I mean, then you just get deeper into the nature of their approval and all sorts of stuff that we're not really here to discuss. But the, what we are discussing is the transparency of the media, the reliability of the media. A recent poll that says it's almost at an all-time low. I won't tell you that it's at an all-time low, because that would be biased. It's actually the second lowest it's ever been. I don't know when the lowest was. I don't know what crazy lies they were telling us then, but for my own honesty, I'll tell you that currently it's at the second lowest. We know there's a bit lower it can go. What I'll tell you in the area of conclusions is you should use news sources like this one, like Rogan's, like Breaking Points, the hit, whatever. You should look at news sources that are outside of this matrix of treachery because it's there in order to accept advertising and lobbying money from established corporate sources, which means it has to operate compliantly and in alliance with the government. So you're not going to get honest information from those sources. Now, I think what, what Joe's point that is... It's been approved that for humans, and, but not necessarily for COVID. Don Lemon's really pushing it hard, isn't he? He's really like, he don't even want dear old Sanjay Gupta to try and restore a bit of balance and faith. Now, I think what, what Joe's point that is... That it's been approved that for humans. You know, I'm aware, I don't live in your country, but I'm aware that like my country, there is a lot of fragmentation and fracture, much of it emerging from this space. That's why I think it's always important to say... I don't trust no media. I don't trust no political parties. My interest is in us forming new ways of communicating that lead to the maximum amount of freedom for us as individuals and as communities. Open your eyes and look at where your life is being manipulated, molded, shackled by the powers and interests of other people, and it doesn't benefit you at all. And look at the systems that hold this fragile yet voracious beast in place because they are right before you now. Right, yeah. That's correct. So in conclusion, I suppose I would say, I mean, I don't know if we've got the clip of what Joe Rogan says about our channel. Russell Brand has become my favorite new independent journalist. Mm -hmm. He's this really open-minded, well-informed journalist. Mm -hmm. He's got papers out. He's reading these facts and he's cracking jokes and he's funny very, very complimentary, and we're very, very flattered to receive those compliments. What I would say is I would return that compliment to Joe Rogan because he's a person that, when he makes mistakes, admits it, is willing to learn continually, is in a conversation with people from all different backgrounds and uh, aspects of the political spectrum and outside of the political spectrum. Elsewhere in our work on my podcast, Under the Skin, I continually talk to experts from across the political field, people from the right, people from the left, anarchists, communists, spiritualists, because I don't know anything. All of you have valuable things to offer. We're continually told that our role is to consume information, to consume products, but we have much more to offer than that. All of us are individuals with agency, ideas, dreams, potential and possibility, and we should be exploring them together because it's going to take every single one of us to change the world and create something more in line with who we truly are. And that's something we have to undertake together, intrepidly, cautiously and right now, if you enjoyed this podcast, please let me know, or this conversation, this video, let me know in the comments below. Give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this one. And then if you need to meditate, have a look at this cheeky, saucy old sauce pot down there. Look at it. Go on. <laughs> Get in there. And also, why don't you subscribe to my mailing list? In the meantime, for heaven's sake, stay free.